What is going on, everybody? As you can see, as you can see, we are joined by none other than Pop Em, Don't Watch Em, Troy. How are you doing, brother? What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Happy Tuesday. We got a fun little show for y'all today. It's going to going to be some controversy it's going to be i think fun. it'll be, be i think fun. it'll be i think it'll be a fun one it's a it's a it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a game type of uh deal but uh it'll be a uh it, it's always interesting i think to to find out for from a lot of people what what is to them worth worth the chase so i'll, I'll be popping up all no pun intended i'll be popping up a few uh little <laughs> pictures and stuff here and uh we'll see what get the old juices flowing for everybody and uh uh, kind of see where where we're at, but let me uh, let me kind of go back a little bit, and say hi to a uh, few of the early uh, arrivals. So, Kitty was in here right away. Good to see you, Mike Widener. Good to see you, brother. Junik, always good to see you. Glad you're uh, back at it. Johnny Crons, good to see you. Blind Squirrel, how's it going, brother? Good to see you too. Hopefully, you enjoyed the uh, doing the pick last week. That was a lot of fun. Um, Brett, how's it going, brother? Let's see. Top dog as always. Uh, what else we got here? Tim Corney. Tim, good to see you. Stacy H. Thanks for jumping in. I think I already said blind squirrel. I'll say it again though. Tim Gorgeous. Timmy, how you doing, brother? Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Christopher. Hey, brother. How's it going? Good to see you. Adam, always good to see you, bud. Um, Johnny T, good to see you. Thanks, bud. Thanks, appreciate it. Hendo, how's it going, brother? Always good to see you. Um, all right, so tonight we are going to, Marty will probably be joining us here in a, in a little bit. I think he's just trying to figure out what uh, what 8 o'clock Eastern actually means. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, let him, we'll let him figure that out. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Tennessee was Eastern Standard Time where he was. So he should... Uh, he should, he should be pretty familiar with what uh, Eastern time is, but uh, we'll give him we'll give him a break. Uh, I know he just got done moving to North Carolina and probably trying to figure a few other things out. So, so tonight will be tonight will be kind of fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be what you guys feel is worth the chase, and I'll, I'll throw up a couple. We'll we'll come firing right out of the gate. It's gonna be it's gonna be like a leadoff home run. This will get everybody all fired up. You know, we'll go back to. Uh, We'll go back to maybe the uh, the old uh, you know Yankee days and maybe get a um, get a Ricky Henderson leadoff home run or something. We'll go even after the Oakland days time. We'll go we'll go when he was with the Yankees for a little while, just because got a couple Yankee fans in here and why not, right? No day. No one could no one could snatch a fly ball out of the air like uh, like Ricky Henderson. That's that's for sure. So, all right. So what do you guys? Uh, let's see. Let me fire up the first one here, and we'll. Uh, We'll get you guys all jacked up. I've got a few. I got a few in the hopper that are uh, coming, but this, this one, this one is the tater of all taters. I think of what of the got? one that what gets people. This will get everyone all fired up, and it's none other than. Uh oh, there we go. There it, there it is. So you guys tell me. So this is this is going to be very subjective, uh, of course, and you're going to have to tell me whether or not this for you is worth the chase and and whatever that means so that can be you know srp that can be secondary that can be waiting in line that can be pitching a tent that could be whatever it may be but you guys tell me and let me know is it is it for you worth worth the chase and it's one of those things where a lot of us are are very familiar with what that is what it is and what it isn't and 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 I wanted to hear from you guys if if this is something that you that you still kind of seek out. There's a lot of there's a lot of fans out there, and and rightfully so. And and we're not, I'm not trying to say that 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 Blanton's is a is a bad bottle of bourbon. It's it's not. It's just for me, right. not not worth not worth all of what you have to do necessarily to get it. You know, what are your thoughts? I think the biggest problem with Blanton's right now is, you know, of course we can't confirm this, but it tastes like four to five year juice. I had a Blanton's actually Saturday night. We had a big barrel pick with our club and somebody pulled out a sample of a 1980s Blanton's. Let me tell you something. If Blanton's today tasted like that, then I'd be chasing every bottle I could, but, 
the current Blantons that is getting released by Buffalo Trace, in my opinion, is young. It's not six to eight year juice. I could be wrong, but just it just doesn't hit. And I really think it's a beginner. I think it's a beginner thing. Everybody, their first bottle, they wanted that Blantons. That's what they went in the stores. They want it. But I just don't think the profile is there. I think, you know, that 93 proof. I've had now I've had some single barrel store picks that were really good. Um, but it's just I don't know. I just want the beautiful bottle, beautiful history, but it's just not one that I know. I've actually turned down blends at this point. It's just it's just not, you know, not my thing anymore. Well, and that's uh, and that's the thing. There he is. We got the guy trying to figure out what uh, eight o'clock Eastern time is. So. <laughs> we'll let we'll let we'll let them get we'll let them get set up and figure out how the uh the, the mic and camera and all that good stuff works so i mean this is clearly his first rodeo so <laughs> all right so uh we'll we'll wait till uh, marty gets fired up and then uh we'll we'll ask him whether or not he feels the old blantons is uh is worth the uh, worth the chase and uh, you know i mean that's the thing in in here's what i'll say about blantons blantons was for i think a lot of us when we go back to the very beginning, we all needed it. We all needed that Blanton's bottle. You know, we didn't we didn't know what we didn't know at the time, right. but we knew we knew it was a badass bottle. Yep. We didn't we didn't necessarily know how good or 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 not good the whiskey was in inside, or was it worth doing all those things? Now, I will also say this: I think going back even a few years ago, it wasn't as difficult to find. Oh um, no. No, it's, it's it wasn't as difficult to find it as it is now. Now you don't hardly see it at all on a on a shelf anywhere. No. So I, I think there's a lot of aura behind it as well. A lot of people that aren't big into bourbon like we are, they're just everyday drinkers, um, celebrities, athletes. They they have Blantons, so the everyday person sees that and they're like, "Oh, I want the one he has," so they want Blantons. That, that, I think that's yep. another part of the Blantons allure is why everybody wants it so bad. Yeah, it, it is. There's a lot of there's an awful lot of hype and stuff around it, and you know, and and again, I think a lot of this is as more people come into the 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 world of whiskey, it, it's that one bottle that is to them kind of attainable. It's not pappy. It's none of that stuff, right. you know. And at times you can you can find that. So I think that becomes like the the must have bottle for a lot of people right out of the gate, you know. Yep. So it was for me. There you go. All right. There you go. There he is. Mr. Whiskey sorry. knows. How's it, how's it going there, brother? It's going, man. Slow, but surely. Sorry. I'm late. Made no, it. that's, that's, but, uh, that's okay. That's, got that's all okay. This half-ass equipment set up now. So it looks, it looks good. You sound good. So we're, we'll we're good happens. to go. So what are, let me ask you this before we move on. What are your thoughts on, uh, on is, is Bland's worth the chase? Now go back, go back to when you first started a little bit. Where were you with Blanton's versus where you are now? Well, it, I, I was kind of like, I think a little bit like your story that we've talked about together is my dad's the one that kind of got me on this whiskey journey and Blanton's was one that he loved. He did. And he still does to this day. So many Christmases ago, he made me try it and taste it. And I, and I, I liked it. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, if you can ever find it. And that's all it took. So I started searching for him. Yep. And it just never ends. I found a bottle yesterday. Of course, it was $62 and I bought it. Yeah. Because he 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 may Can't want it. That. Somebody watching, you know, may need some. I, you never know. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I I don't throw it under the bus. I yep. still think if, if you do want a whiskey collection in a nice bar, I think you need that's a good bottle to have on it. Good. Oh, good it's point. always impressive. You had you have a party, you have people over. Look, you pull out Blanton's, that's the one everybody ooh and ahs. And you know, Marty, like you just said, your father, those are the guys who I feel bad for. Because those old school guys, they loved Blanton's. They loved Weller 12. And I see them in the stores. They can't get it anymore. They right. can't get it. And those are the guys I really do feel bad for because those are the old school OG Blanton's Weller guys. And they it's they just can't get it anymore. It's it's not there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a shame. It really is. And, and you know. I just, you know, for, for especially for new people coming into whiskey and, and, and trying to learn their bourbons is, you know, it, it, it is what it is. But, you know, Eagle Rare and Blanton's are nice ones to start with. You know, oh, I, yeah, I've always yeah. thought that. And, and if those are two decent bottles to chase to try to get your collection going and, 
and now you got something allocated. Now, now you know what it's like. Now you know what it looks like. You know, it's back here. So, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I now, don't Eagle throw Rare, it under the man. bus. Look, Eagle Rare, that to me, $30 for a 10-year, that was a steal at one point. Absolutely. Here in Louisiana, yeah. you could get it at Target. It was on the shelves. Yep. You know, now it's, you know, you can't find it anywhere. But I always thought Eagle Rare was Buffalo Trace. That was a great product for Buffalo Trace. Ten years, 30 yeah. bucks. I mean, you, you can't beat that. And it was good. I mean, it was a good yeah. verb. I, I would I would agree. Like if you if you could go back and, and start somebody off with uh with a bourbon to say, hey, you know, inter- introduce someone to something, you know, an Eagle Rare or a Buffalo Trace, you know, sweet, not a lot of heat, very approachable. Like for people to be, you know, to have that as like their first, you know, thought of what bourbon is, I think it sends them down the right path. So, well, and, and also those are easy for me. Those are easy teaching, yep. tasting notes. Yes. Yep. You know, that are on those. So you can say, hey, man, I mean, what do you think about grape bubble gum? Oh, my God, I get it. Next thing you know, there they are. Yep, you know, I hear you. they feel like they can do it. And, and it's what's, what's to me, that's what it's about. Yeah. All right, let's uh let's hit everybody with a with another one. Somebody just mentioned this a second ago, but here here we go with the uh, the second installment. There it is. Oh, boom! So the <laughs> is it worth the chase? You guys tell me. Now we all know that that we see crazy prices. We know people do crazy things for that damn word that says Weller right there. Everyone does. Everyone goes crazy, and it. From left to right, it only gets more difficult to find it. So, um, so you guys, let me know in the comments. And uh, so, for Nate a lot of people, no. <laughs> now again, again, this is this is a little bit kind of uh, I, a little bit skewed because you know we're starting with the special reserve, which again probably falls into that category of of Eagle Rare and and Buffalo Trace type of stuff. And you kind of step up the proof a little bit in the Weller Antique, and that's that's kind of the for me, that seems to be the sweet spot. The Weller 12, it's never really something that many people see, but uh, it's 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 a good bourbon. They're all good bourbons, but at the end of the day, for you guys, is is it worth is it worth the chase? I know a lot of people uh, do, but you know, I still don't understand it. Look, when I was in college, now we're talking 2005 to 2009. Weller was a bottom shelf screw top bourbon, and I say this all the time. Just because it got popular, Buffalo Trace didn't say, you know what, let's put better bourbon in it. No, it's still the same special reserve Weller bourbon that it always was. There's nothing special. It's still $30 quality bourbon, bottom shelf. And now I still to this day don't understand what blue. I know they snuck out, you know, or said that it was the um, Pappy Mash Bill, if that's what did it. But I just don't understand how a seasoned bourbon drinker, can go crazy over Weller. I don't have, like, if you get it at retail, like, I got CYPB the other day at retail. Like, I mean, I can't, yes, it was good, but $750 for that bottle, my no. mind, yeah, it blows my mind. Now, the Weller Antique 107, that is a legit bottle. I really do like that bottle. I think the profile, that 107 proof fits that profile perfectly. But as far as special reserve goes, if you can find it, 20, 30 bucks, yeah, it's a great zipper. Even if you want to yep. make a cocktail with it, good way to introduce somebody into uh, weeders with the different notes, like Marty mm-hmm. said earlier. I agree. But that Weller 12, man, look, I've had it a few times. I've never owned one, but I've had it. Because actually, that's the one I've never seen. I have full proof, I have, but I've never seen a Weller 12. And I, I, I don't know. I just don't, it doesn't taste like 12 years. It doesn't, yeah. it just doesn't do it for me. But that Weller 107. I think that is that is a good bottle. Those yeah. picks, and if you can get lucky and have a store that really knows how to do picks, you're getting old Rip Van Winkle barrels mm-hmm. in those picks, and those can be really, really good. Those 107 picks. I mean, is it any is it any coincidence that you've got you know old Rip 107, Weller Antique 107? I'm just saying, you know, maybe not necessarily the same thing, but but probably pretty pretty damn close. Like oh, yeah. Stacy's. Like Stacy says, I can get the Weller Special Reserve and Antique tomorrow for retail at twenty-two bucks. I'm assuming that's the Weller Special Reserve. Um, Ohio has some crazy, crazy arrangements with Weller. Um, have heard that about Ohio, and I've been in Ohio and have kind of hit the the mother load, if you want to call it that. But uh, yeah, I know Ohio and allocations a whole whole other story. So we, get the we, we brought up a good point there about larceny. 
you know. Uh, to me, larceny small match is better than a Weller special reserve. Yeah, you'll get the same the same kind of um, you know argument. I mean, proof wise, basically the same. I know the what is the larceny ninety two proof? I think, but I um, agree with that one hundred percent. I think that larceny, the regular larceny, is one of the most underrated. Now, of course, people are going to disagree. That's fine, but in my opinion, I, I, that's an underrated weeded bourbon right there. I agree. I, I agree. Um, I, th I think a little bit of what, you know, outside of the, you know, maybe the, the upper echelon bourbons that, that Heaven Hill puts out, I think some of their, their mainstream things get a little bit underrated. They're a little underrated. I don't think they're quite like, you know, you've got the larceny, you, you know, you've got all kinds of the chicken cock, you've got all those, some of them are great bourbons and not really get talked about much. I get it. It's not sexy to talk about you know, those kind of bourbons and everybody wants the crazy stuff. But, you know, I think some of their, what they have in their core lineup is, is a little, little underrated. So man, the Pikesville rye, the Pikesville rye is another one. Dude, it's, it's a, it, I keep that bottle. I, I swear by it, man. One of the yeah. best old fashions makes incredible old fashioned. Yeah. Some good ones. So, all right, let's, uh, let's move on. This was, uh, let's, let's, We'll we'll kind of mix it around a little bit rather than just kind of go necessarily in uh, in this order. Let's go to one of the let's go to one of the the bigger guys. Um, this to me is kind of a, an interesting one, and well, I'll, I won't say anymore. Let's let's just show it. You guys tell me what you think. Here we go. Is this worth the chase? Oh, that's a good one. I like that. So I mean, yep. Here here for I mean for me. The Four Roses Ellie's, and I've I've talked to you guys, a lot of other people about this. I think even at SRP and secondary prices, I still think for what it is that you get in a lot of these Four Roses bottles is probably, and again, this is my opinion, is worth paying that price for. Now, that's my opinion. There's some people that are Four Roses people, which I am, um, but... I think for a lot of people, Four Roses still seems to be in that affordable category, even at secondary prices. What do you guys think? That 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 bottle, Ellie, I love that bottle. That's one of my favorite releases every year. And Four Roses, though, I will say, Four Roses as a brand is one of those brands that I really liked it in the beginning. And as my palate matured, even the single barrel picks, the cash strength, they're really not – I don't know if my palate just changed and doesn't like them as much, but that yep. LE, that's a bottle that I'm willing to pay a little over retail for every year. I love that bottle. You yep. can taste the age in it. You can taste the spice, the fruit. I think that, that blend is just – that's Brent Elliott's, I mean, just incredible, incredible bottle. It really shows his talents in those yep. bottles. I, I think that bottle is awesome. I, and look at – I think it's 150 retail. I'd pay 250. I, I really would. I think yeah. that bottle to me, that is a good four yeah. roses bottle. I yeah, like I was trying bottle. to. I was trying to land Papa. I was trying to land one of those 130 130 bottles last week, and I was up to about 375, and then I quit. Yeah. So the, these special editions and stuff, I think they're just flat out bar hitters, man. And, and, really and, that, and that's like a, and that's a great point. Think about that. Think about that for a second. So you were at 350, 375 mm -hmm. for 130th anniversary four roses with those ages. And the bottle that Troy just bought that has a fancy little white label that says Weller CYBP Bingo. is yep. is rough is roughly double that price. Yep. Crazy. And, and and there isn't there isn't a chance in hell that the two flavors of those are even remotely no close yeah, right period yeah. so what people are paying a premium for versus not like that's why i still think that four roses and a lot of what they do falls into that still affordable category mm -hmm. even yeah. even even at secondary prices yep yeah and that mm -hmm. um the 2020 release i'm pretty sure had 18 year bourbon in and not just a few drops yeah i mean a pretty good portion of the blend was 18 year bourbon 2021 i'm pretty sure was a 16 and a 14 you're getting well-aged top-notch four roses barrels in that blend 
Yep. I love that bottle. I think unfortunately the those are some of you know are good. some of the most highly allocated, hard to find you'll ever lay your eyes on bottles. Yeah. And one of the stores back in Tennessee before we moved, I mean he. I mean, he does over a million dollars a year in, in just bourbon and he got one bottle last year. Mm. I mean, so, you know, and he got like one birthday bourbon. So it's, I'm sure there's a relationship deal there, but it's just not like, you know, you're going to, if you're going to get it, you're going to have to pay for it. And, 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 but these are bottles that are worth it to me that we're talking about right here. The four roses, CYPB, not so much. Mm-hmm. But the four roses, one thirty. The, the the twenty twenty one. I love these bottles. I, I just man. Yeah, I, 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 I just I, I just think, just think I just think for like what you guys mentioned, the ages of those, and it's not like just a couple little <laughs> drops. Exactly, it's not a couple little drops. They're they're working with a lot of really nice stock and blending fairly equal parts of these things. Yep. And yep. you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I still think Brent Elliott is a is a genius in terms of his blending skills and what it is he does to put these things together and, and to still keep those at a relatively affordable, you know, MSRP. So oh, yeah, that's my, that's my thought on, on four roses. Now I'm a fan. I know they don't always do really well in blinds. I think they because they, they drink soft, they yeah, drink they, soft, you know, they fall on, flat in blinds. They, they do on their own. They're like delicious whiskeys, but in blinds, you know, when you're up against big and bold and spicy, it, yeah, it's just not proof. Gonna, yeah, just not going to compete. So, yep. um, all right, let's see. Now, here's a guy. This guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lord, Lord knows uh, Troy's been doing some chasing, so uh, hey. he knows all about that. <laughs> so he knows. So, all right, let's find uh, let's find another one for uh, for you guys. Now, here, let's go back to kind of something that wasn't very difficult to find now is a little bit more difficult maybe maybe not as difficult but uh, a couple years ago won a a major award at and uh what do you thought what do you think uh, of this one man that's hit and miss for me man i've had terrible bottles i've had awesome bottles it's so hit and miss and at the stores around here, you know, they're starting to put them at like a hundred bucks. And actually, I don't know if y'all know this, but the cost, the cost doubled. So now the cost is fifty-two dollars for Henry McKenna. So now yeah, you're gonna see it on the here retail. Now. It's probably what can be sixty-four, seventy bucks. Yep. Like I said, it's just it's very hit and miss. That's my only problem yeah. with it. Well, Pop, yeah. you know, it's like we talked about Eagle Rare earlier for t- you know a ten year. You know, for what right. you, what we were paying for that bottle. Right, and now Henry McKenna is now jacked up. So we've, you know, it was a great ten-year bottle when you yeah. got a good one, but now they're hit or miss. And and I usually keep two or three, and I've got, I think maybe one unopened. But it's the, you know, it's it's hit or miss for me on that bottle, to yep. be honest. Yeah. Now and with the price keep going up, I'm not going to keep buying them just to right. have those new newer dates. I'm not. Here, here's here's my art. Here's my argument to Henry McKenna. I mean. You, you've got a you've got a ten year, you know, hundred proof bottle and bond, single barrel. I mean, when you think about that price, let's let's even say sixty sixty five bucks at retail. Okay, I think in today's day and age, I think it becomes a pretty damn good value in terms of oh, what yeah. you're getting. And, and I and I get what what you're saying about they can be hit or miss. You know, there's there's some barrels that are better than others, and we. We get all we get all of that, but I think overall, in terms mm-hmm. of what it has to offer, it's it's such a flavor bomb for me. Now I know it can be a little bit oaky, and and that's a little bit of a turnoff for some people. Um, I, I tend to enjoy some some oak on on my bourbon, but um, I think overall, what it is that McKenna offers you know even at those price we, we get a little spoiled because it used to be 35 or 40 bucks yeah. now it's <laughs> yeah. now it's now it's kind of doubled in price and people are like ah i'm gonna pump the brakes a little bit but if that was just something new coming out and and they were just launching henry mckenna 10 year single barrel 65 bucks not one of us would not jump at that opportunity oh yeah i agree, yeah, I, 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 I agree with that you One know. thing I just didn't like was the when they won the two awards, it kind of misled people. You're never going to taste what they tasted at that panel. 
Those were honey barrels selected by yeah. probably the Heaven Hill master distiller. And, you know, and you, you get a bottle like that and you expect it to be, oh, man, this is bourbon of the year. And you taste it. And it's, you know, so your expectations can be a little high. But as far as price point, the stats, I always say the stats of the bottle. Yeah. I mean, it's dead on. You can't. If you find it at retail, I'm not. I'm saying I'm. I'm a buy. I would definitely yeah. at retail. No reason not to buy it. They've just been so hit and miss for me that, like Marty said, I think I'm over. I'm, I'm just not. I don't need it anymore. I don't need to buy yeah. it. You know, there's other stuff I know is going to be good at yep. that price point that I can buy. Hmm. Yeah, no, I and, and I and I get that, and I get that, and that's always a that's always a valid argument. That's why I've always kind of. I've always been a little leery of, of single barrels winning competitions because, you know, let's call it like, what is there? Maybe 200 bottles, give or take, you right. know, I mean, so how do you have, how do you have a, a, a whiskey of the year when there's, you know, only maybe 200 of those, you know? Right. So that, that's a, that's kind of a. Especially a nationwide, you know, something as big as the, I think it was the, San, was it the San Francisco Spirits yeah. competition and won it? Something like that. I mean, it's different. Yeah, like me, you, or, you know, one of our channels, we have our own list. That's different. But as far as something, like, big like that, man, where people want to be able to get it, yeah, you know, a single barrel to me, yeah, that's kind of – because you know they're sending them top-notch sample honey barrels. So, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Even, yeah. though, even, though, even though it was claimed, it was claimed that that bottle was purchased, like, somewhere in California, like, the day of the competition. I mean, who, who – <laughs> I mean – we probably know, you know, who knows the, the, the true story or whatever behind that whole deal. But, um, you know, I don't know. It is what it is. And single barrels, if you're going to do that, have your own, have your own category. But I think it needs to be eliminated from like the, you know, best whiskey in the world or whatever, just based on what it is. So. Yeah. But if, if, if people that are, that are in chat and stuff that if, if mm -hmm. you can find this bottle and you don't have it, I do recommend it. Yo, no doubt. Yeah. I, I do. It's just, but we've had yeah. multiple bottles. That, that's kind of where we got got rolling with that. But yeah. I do not say don't buy it. I, I, you know, fifty nine and under. I think it's worth getting one to see what you think. Yeah. Let, let, okay. let me let me ask you guys this, and people in the chat, do you think Henry McKenna for people that are let's say newer or getting into bourbon, would you consider that a must have bourbon to to start your collection with? I tell you what, I was pretty excited when I saw my first one. I was, I got it. But that first bottle I bought was very bad. It was not good. Mm -hmm. um, but I bought a second one, and the second one was good. But look, at that price point, if it's not good, all right, you spent 50, 60 bucks. If it is, shit, you got a great 10-year bourbon for 50, 60 bucks. I think the gamble is worth that price point and the stats that the bottle's giving you. I, I think it's worth it. Bottle and bond, 100 proof, 10-year bourbon, 60 bucks, single barrel. Why not pull the trigger? I mean, you know. I mean ju just based on those specs alone, in terms of what that is, right. I think that's I think that starts people off like on on the right foot as to like what you're going right. to kind of experience right. with with a whiskey. You know, when you combine that with you know Buffalo Trace, you know things along those lines, I think it's a good I think it's a good benchmark to figure out what it is that you you know do or don't enjoy about a bourbon. Right. You know? Right. No. All right, let's see what else I can dig up here real quick. Um, all right, let's go with one that's a little bit. Here's another one that I think is going to be a little bit, a little bit underrated. I don't know necessarily why, but this is not just this bottle, but this is this this bourbon uh, overall. So here we go. What do you think of the the wood finishing series from Maker's Mark? Man. Is is it is it is it worth is it worth a chase? Now I, I say worth a chase, even though a lot of times when you get to or go to makers, they're on the shelf. Now they're there on the shelf a lot, but maybe not elsewhere. But for a lot of other people, is is there a chase factor to some of these makers mark picks? I think so. I think I think if you see the now when you say chase, now that that that's where it kind of the road forks a little bit for me. When if I go to a store and I see it, I'm buying it. Mm -hmm. Am I going to look for it individually? Probably not, because so many of these stores are now picking those stave releases, whatever yes. the five or six that, that that you know. So those are always pretty good. So you, you're kind of right there to where you on a budget. You need to pick which way you want to go. 
you know, do you want to do the FAE or do you want to do the stay finishes that the stores are picking? You know, and if you can do both, I recommend that. But no, if I see it, I'm picking it up. I yeah. mean, hands down. I, I mean, I love it. It's great. I'll buy every release they do in that. I have from day yeah. one bought them. I'll, I think they're really good. I think it's, it's, I appreciate a distillery like Maker's Mark. And I said this in a video the other day about Jack Daniels. I appreciate the innovation, the forward thinking. And I think that's where like Four mm -hmm. Roses, they're yep. starting to fall behind. They're not, they're staying in that old school mentality. They're yeah. not, you know, innovating, doing new, exciting things. And I think for Maker's Mark, a distillery like Maker's Mark, that's very old school, family ran. For them to do that was probably tough and they did it. And it's a huge success. I, I love, like I said, yeah. every one they release. I will buy. I like those. I think I they're really good. They do well in blinds. I, I, I like them. Now, as far as chasing, I don't think you can. Well, it depends on where you're at. Um, I mean, I wouldn't pay crazy amount for it. I think they're, what, 70, 70, 80 mm -hmm. retail. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I wouldn't pay $200 for it if that's your only choice. It's sad, but it's getting to that point. Um, you know, even store owners now are starting to really jack this stuff up. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think if another one at retail, easy buy. Now, if you don't like weeded bourbon, then no, you're not going to like it. But if you're a weeded bourbon fan, that those finishes, I've liked every one of them. I've never had a bad one where I'm like, ah, this is this wasn't worth it. At yeah. that price point for that bourbon, you're not going to be disappointed when you open the bottle. Well, most reviews last year, too, when people were doing 0102s, it was a hard pick. Yep. Yeah, yeah they were both very consistent and very good. So it was hard for you to say, well, I'll just – for me, I, I went with 02 because there was there were some fruit notes there that I thought were outstanding. But 01, boys, you could just say, okay, you only get one. Hell, I don't care. Hand me either one of them. I think they're that yeah. good. Yeah. This year, this, I saw the sticker for the, I can't remember what it was. They announced what this year's was, and it looks really good. Yeah. I, 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 I saw the same thing, too, and I, I forget exactly what it was, too. But it's, it's always now like it, it kind of just – you know, piques my interest as to what is it they're going to continue to do with like that lineup, exactly. you know, and, and they kind of like thought that about Maker's Mark. When yeah. You ever, now, now every year that is on my list of, hey, what is this release going to be this year? And and you're and you're making and now you're making the point for, you know, is is it worth the chase is whether it's a hunting it down mm -hmm. or finding it right. because there there are some people that don't see these at all. So right. that's why I got to that's why I got to thinking is that for a lot of people who don't yeah. get these yeah. these you know FAE 01 02s there are a lot of people that seek these things out. Now if you go to the distillery a lot of times you can get those there. You know un unlike a lot of other you know LEs or you know limited edition type of things right. but I I think it's still slightly underrated and I think it's partially because of like what you guys mentioned before is that you know, people think of makers as like one thing, like just, just the standard makers is always what comes into your mind, yep. you know? And I think yep. people have a hard time getting kind of outside of that box and thinking of, of anything else as being, you know, special or exclusive or anything like that. So that's, that's my opinion. So, yep. Yep. Nope. all right, let's see, let me go with, I'll uh, go with a couple of the suggestions that you guys gave me before. Let's go with, uh, Let's go with Marty's. Uh, here we go. Now, is is this a chaseable whiskey? What do you guys think about this bad boy? Oh. Is it is is this is this one? Because for a lot of people, there's still a lot of people that don't see the rare breed rye. So is it is it one that people you guys in the chat? would be willing to kind of seek out, you know, would you, you know, would you focus, would you want to really spend your, what is it? 60 bucks or so? Yeah. 68, $69. I think when I, okay. So it. it's approaching 70 bucks. Yep. You know, so if you're for, in the chat and you've never had rare breed rye, you don't get it. And you know, you're taking a trip to another state. So you make your list of bourbons. You're going to go look for, put that on the list. That bottle is definitely worth 70 bucks. It's a great rock. Another one that will blow your mind in an old fashion. But if you don't get it where if you're somewhere where you don't see it on the shelf, Louisiana, it's everywhere. Tennessee, it's everywhere. If you, you've taken a vacation, put that on your list to get that bottle and bring it back. That is 100 percent worth the chase or even to ask your store owners, hey, can you get this in? That mm -hmm. is a good bottle. 
I, I, I agree. I think it's a, I think it's a great rye whiskey. And at that $60 price point, Hey, let's, let's call it what it is. $60 whiskey. Isn't what $60 whiskey was a year or two ago. No. It, yeah, it's, you, you got to take that into effect. The prices of every look at Elijah Craig Battle Proof. It used to be what sixty. Now you, it's going to be a hundred dollars here soon. Retail. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm surprised it stayed at that that seventy seventy five dollar range to, even at this point. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and it's non chill filtered, right? The rye. Um. Good. Good question. I think so. I think. I think, I think it is. I think it is too. But... The bourbon is not. The rare breed bourbon isn't. Now they're coming out with one. But I think the I think the rye is non chill filtered. I think you're I think you're right. So, um, all right. So what do we got here from from Halden? Um, I don't see enough of the increase in flavor in the rare breed rye versus wild turkey one hundred and one rye. Uh, that that's Ooh, I don't know about that. Oh. that. He's talking about two different animals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he got about a, little... a V eight and a V four. <laughs> yeah, there's uh there's some some interesting interesting ones. That's that's for sure. Uh, what we had for Keith before, um, Scott? Can I ask about the oh peerless pick, uh, Keith? Yeah, we'll we'll get in we'll get into that in a in a in a little bit as we get kind of close to the end. I'll, I'll go over a few few things going on with uh with that. I'll I'll kind of drop a little uh, launch launch before to the patrons so people see the uh, the sticker for patrons. What's coming up soon? But uh, you guys who aren't part of uh, Mash and Journey Whiskey Club or Patreon, you may not have seen the sticker yet with the uh, the most recent one. So um, let's see. Let's catch up here a little bit. God, I'm, I'm oh, here we go. We already got some. Uh, yeah, I sure. You know, that. you know, you know, you made it when you got a uh, the porn bots in, right? Oh, we got pot. I can't see the chats. I don't know. I can't. See oh, you can't. Chat. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm sure they'll they'll take care of it. So um, should have put a shirt on then. Damn. <laughs> yeah, see, that's exactly what it is. You bring uh, you bring the gun show to the live stream and see what happens. <laughs> all right, let's find another. All right, let's go with let's go with Troy's next one. So this was what his suggestion was before, and uh, you guys tell me whether or not you feel this guy is worth the chase. Now, can now remember, all of these aren't just going to pop up in your your mom and pop liquor store or whatever it may be. You might have to do you know some some sketchy things for some of these bourbons, but you know, in your own mind, is this worth the chase? Boom. <laughs> so I, I have my arguments for both ways ready to go. So it's 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 a very, very um yep, controversial bottle right th now. Th this this for this for me is a really this this I think we could have a conversation about for an hour and, and we we could we could continue to go on about this and alternatives to this and and all of that. It's it's a this was a crazy like unicorn. So uh, let me get that off the screen and then um, so you guys, including in the chat, let me let me know. You know, is is the Russell's thirteen when we see it again because we will or we you know, however we see it, it it'll, it'll be available. Um, to what degree we don't know, of course, but. For you guys, when you hear Russell's 13 is releasing in a week or whenever it may be, do you get a little jacked up and do what you got to do to maybe hunt down a bottle? So, what so the reason why this bottle for me was when I, when you asked, I picked because probably last year that was the bottle I was asked the most in, in comments and messages, is this worth the price it's going for? And mm -hmm. guys, I'm going to tell you, if you haven't had it, first off, let me just say, absolute great bottle it is quintessential kentucky bourbon at its finest but 800 to a thousand dollars for that bottle no way i've had russell reserve single barrel picks that that are better that are better at 50 60 bucks they're better it, you know that price to me 800 even five i wouldn't pay 500 i wouldn't pay 300 it's, it's a great bottle absolutely great bottle but you have to be able to get it maybe 150 and under after that it's just not worth that price i think yeah. it's going to disappoint you if you pay 300 400 500 dollars for that bottle mm -hmm. you're going to know it you're going to think it's great but you're going to be disappointed because it doesn't blow mm -hmm. you out the water and another thing i've noticed about that bottle now that mine's been open it does not 
age well, not age, but doesn't um, open up well at all. Yeah. It, it flattens out. Interesting. You know, flattens out a lot, a lot. Yeah. It did not do well in the uh, blonde, my blonde bracket challenge. It, it lost in its region. It didn't even get out the region. But um, we have a store here in Mississippi, my Sano's Fine Wine. He did a 12-year, I think it might have been 13-year mm-hmm. pick. Or no, it was 11. It was 11 or 12-year pick. Blew that Russell's out the water. I, I just think you can, for the price, yeah, if you see it and your store owner calls you and says, hey, man, you've been a good customer. I'm going to give you this bottle for you. damn yeah. right you buy that bottle. But some of the prices, I'm not kidding, that bottle is going for eight to a thousand dollars, eight hundred to a thousand dollars. No, you will be sick yeah. if you open that bottle and paid a hundred dollars, paid eight hundred dollars for it. That's yeah, and that's I've only had candy. a taste of it one time. I've uh, I approached a store owner back when it came out and I said, Hey, save me one if you got it. And he told me, or she told me, I got three of them and I'm taking them home. Oh. So I, I've never had the opportunity to buy it, uh, but when I did try it, I did enjoy it. Yeah, it, and, it's a great. Like yeah, I said, yeah. if there was like five bottles I had to take with me, if that was the only five bottles you can have, I'd want a bottle of that. Yeah, but yeah. the prices, you know, you have there's so much you have to put into it. Is it worth the chase? The chase, yes, because mm-hmm. to me, the chase means you're putting in work to get that bottle at retail. That's what a chase yeah. means to me. Going to click on the secondary and paying just because you have the money is not chasing. That's just you're yeah. buying it because you can. That is worth putting in the effort for the chase, but you have to be smart about it. 250, yeah. 250 might be the max because, like I Damn. said, great bottle, but it's not gonna you're gonna you're gonna drink it and you're gonna be like, oh man, you know this is this is good Russell Reserve, but it's not it's not two three four hundred dollars Russell Reserve. See it's not now, that much different than single barrel picks to me. That, I now, guess that's what I'm trying to say. Now I might I might disagree in terms of value a little bit. Like for me, I think what what this had to offer. Like I think it's slightly. Now again, this is where a little bit of my profile comes in. I like that oakiness, but I think for I this one, yeah. this now I mean my bottle, as you can see, is is well about halfway down or so, and. It's a lot more cherry. It's a nice sweet oak. It's very well balanced. It's rich. And it it's slightly richer and more complex than, than some of the Russell single barrels that I've had. Now, again, you know, we can be very nitpicky in terms of what, what all of these things are, but man, I think it's overall an incredible bourbon. Um oh, yeah. you know, it's it just I, I agree. I, I don't know. I guess I don't know how else to like, you know, say it in terms of like value. And again, that's all subjective. I'm not going to get into, right. you know, somebody, somebody might say this is a thousand dollars, you know, because you got a thousand bucks to spend, you know, it's right. just, it's, it's crazy. But I think for, for what it is, I, you know, some people are like, you know, and I, I, I always wonder if some people like want to just kind of shit on a bottle because everyone else says it's good, you know, so you kind of wonder that, that approach. Like, yeah, yeah, but, but I, I think overall it's a pretty special bottle of, of bourbon in my opinion. Yeah. So yeah. I, love I, the label. I think the label's pretty. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's blue. It's, I mean, it, it really it, is. It, I mean, it stands out. It yeah, stands out really gold. well. Yeah. You know, all of those. So, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, if I had to take five bottles, that would be definitely wow. one of those five bottles. Uh, maybe there's a maybe there's a, a mod who wants to get rid of some of that stuff, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, it's, oh, Man, I'm missing a chat. I'm missing what's dude, going it's, on. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone crazy. I mean, if anyone if anyone's looking for. Oh, my God, I can't even say this stuff. It's so bad. <laughs> It's so my bad. god that's that's terrible some of this yeah. stuff um all right let's dc say it says buy a russell's 10 and just take a sharpie and mark out the 10 by 13. <laughs> that is an approach that is definitely uh that's definitely oh, an approach dude. that's that's for sure you you might not you might not trick the uh the whiskey enthusiast in that deal but uh no that yeah, yeah that that's a little different it, you're gonna know when you taste that and no that's not the 13 yeah all right thing Thanks, Adrian. I don't know what our delay is. I bet I bet on my end it's probably 20 seconds or so, 15 seconds. So thanks, guys. 
All right, let's see if we can find a uh, another one. This will all right, this will be kind of a, an interesting one. I'm I love to hear people talk about this and then listen to like what what they describe about other things that they don't like. This is always a fascinating one to me. And here we go. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> so the smoke the smoke wagon. I went with the uncut unfiltered. Oh, yeah, only you got to go with uncut unfiltered. Yeah. That's the it, one. It's that's it's one. it's like their let's say best of the of the yeah. really that they've got. You know, and it's I don't know. Wait, what is the ages on this stuff? I it's mean, four, maybe... it's a blend of four and eight year. Okay. Un uncut NGPs. And it's roughly MSRP, what, 80 bucks? Yeah, yeah somewhere around there. Exactly yeah, that's, that's right. Right. And and we know we know there's an awful lot of people who've got on the old smoke wagon wagon. So let me know in the chat. Is this is this something for you guys that you think is is worth the chase? You know, is is a blended eight and four year roughly MGP, you know, that's that's uncut, unfiltered. Now the new batches, eight year. I don't know. He might. I don't know what he's running out of because their contract is still in form. So he has the stock. I just don't know how much stock he has. It was eight years, so it might have went a little, little younger. But I, I've always been happy with every bottle I've got. I've not. I've not had a bad bottle yeah. of uncut, unfiltered. Well, it's you know we got to start thinking price too because you know we know eight year MGP stuff is disappearing. Yeah. So if we don't know if we're going to still continue to get it for 80 bucks, it may go to 120, 130. And are we still yeah. going to jump on it? Right. You know, cause these batches, they are different. And, and like, like Troy said, we've not had a bad one, yeah. you know, so it's, it's a matter of what, what happens in the future. If it continues with the eight year and how hard it is to get, you know, what he has to do to, to, to make it affordable. So and I think I have a feeling that he's running out because he just released that new one. It's called Uncut the Younger. Yeah. Which is younger juice. So Trevor's I'm had wondering it, yeah. if that's, you know, that's a, a hint that he might be running out of that older um that older the stuff. Year. Yeah. It's it, you know, that's the thing. Smoke wagon, when it kind of, you know, popped on the scene, you know, whatever a couple years ago, whatever it was, um, I mean, they they came out of the gate, you know, swinging, that's for sure. And they hit people with some really damn good. Um, you know, bourbons and, you know, I, again, I think it's one of those things, especially with MGP, you know, MGP is one of those brands where if you're, if you're familiar with other brands who are getting it, you know, and what may be in other bottles, you can kind of start to do the math and figure things out a little bit, you know, on your own. But again, knowing who's blending and doing all of that stuff is a huge factor as well. I mean, if you're not just getting single barrels, you know, if you have an idea of kind of the passion and what's going on with that whiskey and how it's getting in the bottle, I think that has a big, a big factor in the, the overall aspect of, of, you know, that bourbon. So yeah, and he, and he has one of the best and oldest relationships with MGP. He was buying barrels from them, yeah. like when it was Seagulls. So he has a really, really good relationship with them. So I don't think he's ever, yeah, gonna, he, I don't think he'll really run out because they, you know, they take care of him. So I don't know. It's, it's middle, late summer. He was on with me and Aaron Chepnick. And like you said, he, he did not seem to be nervous about running out of no, anything. He does. And he, and he's, you know, he even talked about, you know, he's got a new warehouse. He's trying to get worked out through the city and all that to get all this stuff put into. So he's got the stuff coming. So we may be barking up something that's not even a problem for a while. So, and that'd be great. You know, yeah, that I don't keep think the price down and keep it affordable. I don't think he has any, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he has any intention of ever distilling, does he? No. No. As far as no. bourbon, no. I know he does um, vodka, that silver dollar vodka with the uh, – yeah. he processes yeah, it through actual silver um, uh, filtering. But, I, yeah, I don't think he – yeah, I didn't think he had any intention of ever distilling. I think he just contract distills. And I yeah. think they ship – if I'm not mistaken, they ship the barrels to him fresh, and he ages them in Las Vegas? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if I don't think so. I think they do a lot of the aging in Indiana. Then he requests them, and who knows how long they sit there for. I don't think it's I don't think it's aging overly long there. Um, I, man, I don't know how much stuff you'd want to be aging very long there. Yeah, especially not Las Vegas. I mean, that dry. No. It's just going to evaporate. Yeah, 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 putting... yeah. You know, so but I mean, I think over, I think I think overall, what what he's done and with that brand. 
and and yeah. uh, and what he's produced mm-hmm. has I think he's done a, a pretty fantastic you know incredible job with, right. with all of that. So I give I give him a lot of credit. I mean, he does a great job with you know all the social media stuff. Yeah, he's I mean, a hoot, he's, man. Yeah, he's transparent about things. You know, he makes yeah. no bones about that. And and I mean, I think that's refreshing for for a lot of us. Yeah, he's I mean, I had three I had three pages. Do. He did. I had, yeah, go ahead, Troy. I was going to say, I had three pages of questions for his ass when he came on, and I got to ask <laughs> three questions in two and a half hours. So, I mean, he's a damn hoot. I mean, so yeah. that, that makes it even yeah. more fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's got a – there's a lot of there's a lot of knowledge there. I mean, I think he's – he's a. I mean, he's a great talker. He's a great salesman. He's a great guy, you know? So, I mean, I think all of that kind of combined with – you know, I mean, hey, I mean, the bottle doesn't help either. I mean, that's a badass looking bottle. Yeah, you awesome know. bottle. It's it's flashy, and I think what he's doing overall with the entire brand, um, you know, he's not just you know selling a turd in a bottle. You know, it's yeah. good. It's good. Good whiskey. So, what if he's ever going to start doing picks? Well, trust me, we've we've been on it, and it doesn't seem like it right now, anyway. So, is he going to um, do what? Picks, picks anymore? No, I think he's over. He, I think he's one of those ones that gave away too many of his good barrels and he's regretting it and he's, you know, he's blending. There's no reason, you know, I have, we did a single barrel a while back and I mean, it's, it's great. Those single barrels, man, nine, 10 year single barrel MGP, you know, now he's wishing he still had some of the, you know, the old, what was the blue label called? It was like a 12, I think it was a 10 or 12 year. Oh yeah. What, what was that? Was, what was that? A rare, was it called rare or something like rare and. No, Rare and Limits is the one he releases still every oh, now and then oh, with the, with okay. the metal on. It was a de- Desert Jewel. Oh, Desert Jewel. Yeah, yeah, Desert, Desert Jewel. Jewel. That was like, a, I think, yeah. a 12-year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 12-year blend. That was, that was, that's gone. I mean, it, yeah. that, that label is gone. I, I still don't think, like, I mean, I still just don't think there's that much of that age stuff around anymore. I mean, maybe some of the big, big guys might have some of that stuff, a little bit of it. Right. But, man, I... I have a feeling we're going to start to see a lot of these ages come down, you know, in the next year where there's just not much of this age stock around anymore. And people that's, need that's, to remember too, Greg Metz is no longer at MGP. So right. a few years from now, you're going to be tasting stuff that it's, you're tasting the difference now in some of this young MGP. I swear it's to not, God. Yeah. It's not the same, not the same. Yeah. Man, if there's, if there's somebody, if there's somebody looking for uh, looking for girls and stuff tonight, they've really come to the right. Uh, well, I'm married, screen, that's for sure. They yeah. send in pictures in the chat, or is it like Dude, it's words? It's botting up. I man. mean, now it's now it's like you can get you can get D pics and everything from these guys. Jesus, man! All kinds of good stuff. All right, well, let's rather than talk about D, let's. Um, what about this one? So this, I didn't have a photo of this. Um, but what about the what about this? Is is this a is this a worth the chase? Two Bottle words writer. from me. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Marty? Is a uh, it, would you do some sketchy things for an Elmore T. Lee? No, not really. No. Not really. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Rock, Rock Hill. All right, so we want to talk about that that um, mash bill. Rock Hill Farms. That's a good bottle. I would definitely chase Rock Hill Farms, but the Elmer T. Lee, I think it even falls fat, flat to Blanton's. I think the Blanton's is a better bet, you know, because some of those Elmer T. Lee's three hundred and fifty bucks for that man. Yeah, but it's a, it's a it, you know what? It's a thirty six dollar bottle, right? Exactly. It's, it's, that's 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 it, true. It, just, it is yeah. what it is. You got to expect yeah. thirty six dollar bourbon in it. So. That's it. <laughs> that's what yeah, it's. yeah, it's a. It's it is one of those bottles that man, there's just something there's something about it. And again, I'll, I'll admit it. I mean, it's not like it's the the greatest bourbon. There's just something about that old Elmer T. Lee. Um, my my dad was like fixated on the stuff for a little while, yeah, and it was is. it was just kind. Of, I don't know what it was about Elmer T. Lee. There's not many things that he kind of freaks out about. But man, if you if you get him a bottle of Elmer T. Lee, it's just like I don't know. Like I just gave you a lottery ticket or something. I don't know what it is. But, I think it's another um, one like we were talking about with uh, McKenna. It's a single barrel, so one bottle can be. Re- you might get a honey bottle and it, it's really right. good, but if you get a bad one, it, it's just it's not good. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, I think any of those things. Even though I think with 
with that, that, and, you know, and them proofing those things down like they do. I mean, they make that a, pr they make that pretty damn consistent. There's really no way that they couldn't be very, very similar on those when you're, because what is it? 90 proof? Yeah, I think so. 90, you know, I, so. I mean, how, how do you, how do you not have like a, like a bunch of these barrels, proof it down to 90 and not have a consistent profile kind like of. Buff right. It's like Buffalo Trace. Yeah. You know, you've got all these damn barrels coming out. Where are these hiding? Yeah. I, there's no special build to it. It's just, I don't know, man. Yeah, I hear the you. Regular Buffalo Trace is another good buy. You can Absolutely. add that to the list. Is it worth the chase? I mean, now we're lucky here in Louisiana. It sits in every shelf in every store, but the regular just Buffalo Trace, I think that's another great beginner bourbon. Be as well in um, old fashions and mixers. That's a good buy. Yep. yep. All right. Now I know I know people do some sketchy stuff for this. So I would do some of the stuff in the chat for that. <laughs> there is something about there is something about birthday bourbon that still gets the best of everybody. And you know, the schwinker puckers up a little bit, all those good things. <laughs> when when people when people hear oh, old forester birthday bourbon, you know, like there's a lot of people who will do some some crazy things for. Let me tell you, I, I get some, I get some crazy crazy limited bottles. I've never gotten. I've never even sniffed. Uh -oh, no, I had not either. Bourbon. Now no. I will say this: I've, I've tasted them. I'll say this: the last two years have been disappointing. I think that 18, the red. I think it was a red label. Was that one was good, and after that, the proof was low. Yeah. And I might. Have, I don't want to say proof makes the big difference, but I. I think that 20 and that 21 were kind of – they were just okay. For, for for being a birthday bourbon, I expect that bottle to be amazing, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's if it's a good bottle. I, I mean, if I ever have the opportunity for 250 I'm buying it, you know. Okay. I, yeah. Because I, I, I don't know when yeah. I'd ever see it again if I had the opportunity at that. So. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I get it. Say, I pay pretty um pretty penny for that one. That's a good question. Would you guys trade a Stag Junior for a Lucky Seven 14 year store pick? My answer is yes, and I'm gonna tell you why. Stag Junior is gonna keep releasing that 14 year bourbon store pick is a single barrel you're never gonna see again. Never gonna see it again. I would definitely make that trade. I I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. I think for what that is, when I first tasted it, when I first cracked up, just even the standard one, I didn't even have a, a store pick. Um, I thought like right away, I'm like, wow, this is a pretty, mm -hmm. pretty incredible, pretty incredible bourbon. So I, I would have, I would have no problem trading a, a stag junior for a 14 year store pick. None, none whatsoever. Um, all right. So geez, man, we're already at an hour. Holy cow. That went fast. Hey, um, I go fast. <laughs> I feel like we let me, let me, I'll throw, I'll throw a couple, couple more up there real quick. And then I'll, I'll do a couple, a uh, couple updates. I think we, I think we already kind of know the answer to this one. No, I, mean, I no. think, yeah. I mean, I think if, if you know anything about bourbon that, that the cost of that completely, you know, for what it is and the price, it's just it's a flat no for me as yeah, well. It's, no, it's I'll just, tell you two ways it's a yes. I'll tell you two ways. One, get in a store lottery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. For it. The other one, if you want to join or, or be part of these big uh, fundraisers that have multiple years of Pappy, that's the other way. Yeah. Other than that, I've got it. It's okay. It doesn't. Yeah. I just, I'm, ton of other stuff just right behind me here that i drink mm -hmm. more than that yep I'll, I'll even give a double retail on each one i'll give you that if you can get it for double retail so let's say that the, the old Rip van winkle to me that 10 year if you get that at 79 bucks dude that's a that's a good bottle at 79 bucks but five six seven hundred hell no but it's a 10 you, year. This, you know double retail at 150 yeah i'd pay 150 for the 10 i'd yep. pay 300 what is it i mean because their they're retail aren't that mm -hmm. high the retails are actually not that high for those bottles i think the 23 is what um not the 20 is it the yeah the 23 is what i think like three 350 retail keith i'll do a better job next time says <laughs> says so, so scott you should clear out your browser before you go live next time <laughs> 
I'll do a, uh, I'll do a better, I'll do a better job. All right. Here's a, uh, here's one more. Uh, and I think I, th this, this is kind of a loaded question, but here we go. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to say yes. I mean, look, I give Buffalo trace a lot of shit on my channel, but when it comes to BTAC guys, George C. Stagg will all, I think is going to be, will go down Damn as right. my number one always. I think George C. Stagg is what William. every, you know, if you can build a bourbon, like a Madden, if you can build a player yep. and you get everything a hundred George T. Stagg is build a bourbon. It is yep. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. William LaRue Weller, too. You can, you know, those yep. are really good, but it's just, you know, definitely that's worth the chase. You're going to chase anything. Chase BTAC. Hell yeah. Yep. Yep. That's the, that's the thing with some of those things. And again, you know, price, it does become a huge factor. You know, like I don't think anyone's chasing down some of these things for $1,500, $2,000. That just, that's not what people are going to do. If you can find them at, or maybe slightly above, you know, MSRP, if you somehow get lucky from that standpoint. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think they're great to have in your collection just from the standpoint of, you know, trying those, then you can experience it and then you can be let down like everyone else, you know? So when you spend $2,000 on a Pappy 15 and you try it and you're kind of like right. waiting for fireworks and stuff to go off and it like literally <laughs> never happens. It'll right? never happen. That that's that's pretty much what what Pappy is in a in a nutshell. Not that it's bad, right. it's just not even remotely close to the the hype that it that it is. So now the back to the B tackle. We'll say yep. this now: Saz eighteen and ER seventeen, mm -hmm. no way worth it. To me, the Thomas H Handy destroys the Sazerac eighteen. It's barrel proof. Yep. It's it's only six to seven years, but I'm telling you. I've had the Saz drink the stuff, sample the Sazerac 18. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. People are paying two, three, four thousand dollars for this bottle when the Thomas yeah. H. Handy, in my opinion, is way better. Way you better. You got it. I, I, I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's where part of the, the whiskey education and knowing what it is that you're buying, um, you know, especially if you're going to pay a premium for something. You know, my guess is that most people who are buying these things for a premium understand however there are the people with more money than time and don't care about any of that other than what that label says we all know that you know but right. um if you try it and you think you're getting a two thousand or three thousand dollar bottle and it's that much better than something else that's you know a hundred bucks yeah you're about ready to be really mad yep. you just shelled out all that money for that so um all right so let me let me go over this real quick we'll wrap her up we'll let the uh <clears throat> the junkies do their thing. I mean, not that I interfere with them at all, but um, so let's see. Let me touch on a couple of mash and journey things. One, somebody asked before about the um, the peerless. I'm I'm thinking you're probably referencing the bourbon. Well, anyway, it. Long story <laughs> short, I'm not. We're not even going to get into all this. It was it was a little bit of a little bit of a mix up. The, the barrels didn't, or the bottles didn't make it to California. They ended up in Louisiana, the liquor store. Uh, we were able to get a handful of bottles enough to get them to the people who help with the pick. That was basically, basically it. Um, Troy's doing us a, a big favor regarding some of that stuff. So we, we appreciate uh, that very much. Shout out, shout out to Riverbend Market, big Joe at Riverbend Market, big help on that. Shout out to them. Yeah. Cheers, so man. they, so yeah, un unfortunately, the the Peerless Bourbon is not going to be released. Not this one. We'll be doing another one in, I believe, August down there. So hopefully, hopefully they'll roll something out a little special for us and and let us uh, let us maybe get our mitts on on something that's that's maybe not quite allocated for the single barrel program. But anyway, we'll we'll see with that. And then for everybody who is not part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, a why not? Why are you not? And B, here is what we've got releasing on Friday, starting at five o'clock Eastern. I'm excited Boom. for this one. This bad boy right here. I'm not kidding. I'm not saying this just because this was a pick that we did. This Nulu pick that was finished in Tawny Port barrels for seven months surprised the living you know what out of me. Absolutely incredibly balanced finished uh bourbon and what what and how they got that it's a five and a half year um mgp 
that they finished for. And this is one of their longest, if not their longest one, seven months in a tawny port barrel. Um, when I tried it, I was just like, oh my God, this is just so rich, complex, delicious. And you just wanted to like, if I was like a, a billionaire, I mean, I would just like soak in that stuff. I yeah. liked it that much. Look, Nulu too, guys. If you haven't heard of Nulu, anybody in the chat, you see Nulu coming. I'm telling you, they, they put out some good stuff. I've been to yeah, that. Um, I've been there in Louisville. Chase over there, he's doing some crazy. I call him the mad scientist. He will finish anything you want to try it out. I mean, he's got honey, toasted barrels, um, cognacs. He's, I think he's getting some Armagnacs. He will do anything and try it, and he's doing some crazy stuff over there. So yeah. I, I know this one's going to be that that port's going to be pretty good. I'm I'm really I'm really excited to to put this one out there. I mean, I think for what it is, it, it was something where we weren't really kind of sure if we were. Then when we got samples uh, sent to us, I mean, we were just like, I mean, we were like speechless right away. We just were not expecting that uh, overall. It it was just. Um, it was just just crazy. Um, I know something else coming soon within a very short period of time will be our Nashville um, barrel company, the bourbon and the rye. So both of those will be coming. That's a pretty quick turnaround as well. Uh, we've got Redline, which is going to be our honey cask finished bourbon. Um, small company in, in, uh, in Louisville or in uh, Kentucky. And they've got some, I think this was a six year plus MGP finished in, in actual honey casks. This isn't, this isn't honey poured in these barrels or none of that. They sell their honey and do all of that kind of stuff. Um, and, and this didn't taste like a, like a liqueur. This was not that at all. So uh, we've got that coming pretty soon. What's going to be the so, price point on that one, Dion? Though? Um, I, I think the honey cask is going to be like one 10 or something like that i think not so not not too bad considering like considering what it is so we're we're okay with that um but yeah anyway there's a little little quick update for anybody who's not maybe and is part of the mash and journey whiskey club uh some some good things going on with with all of that as well so that's it that is it uh, guys, thanks for uh, thanks for joining, giving a little bit of your input. Everybody, thanks for uh, joining tonight in the chat. Next week, uh, there won't be any any live, I don't think, unless somehow I have time at night. But we're going to be down in in Louisville next week uh, doing our pick for the new. Uh... <clears throat> Y'all might as well get a Tom share down there. I tell you, we, we, we get down a lot. So we got the Russell's, we got the Russell's reserve single barrel coming and yes. we're getting, and we're getting a, a chance to do um, a Kentucky spirit, which I, I think they had not done those in, in a while. So now they're kind of ramping that back up. So we, we jumped at the opportunity and said, yeah, let's, let's do one. Can't hurt yeah. to have yeah. one of those. So we'll be down there. Uh, we weren't really able to get, others involved in this one wild turkey was a little funny about the who they were having there the time elements it's 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 a really rush process like we have a like a short window of like an hour and a half i know that sounds like like it, it could be a lot of time but i'll tell you what when you're kind of going through some of those and if there's any right. any little you know thing that that makes you start thinking about what you're doing uh that hour and a half goes by by really, really quickly. So we'll be down there. I'll, I'll see. I'll probably bring some stuff. And if, if for some chance I I'm, I'm able to do it, maybe I'll pop on for a little while, but other than that, then we'll be back at it. So um, yep. there we have it. So yeah, next, next Tuesday, no live more than likely. Uh, then after that, I'm kind of working on some other things and, and all of that. So one other thing I wanted to say is if you guys in the chat right now or watching on the replay have not subbed to, to Troy, pop them, don't watch them. Marty, whiskey knows. Man, do these guys a favor. They're they're a really really fun part of the whiskey community. Um, you know, great guys, and and all of that helps. I mean, they they deserve everyone 
you know, watching their content and supporting and, and doing all that. So appreciate that, man. Appreciate you, Scott. I've always had fun when we come on. We always have fun. I, 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 I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. And that's the thing. It's it's all about it's all about uh, the camaraderie and good people and, and all of that. And um, it's kind of what whiskey does, brings brings good people together and you kind of shoot the shit and have some good times and um and all of that. So with that, I'll wrap it up on the sappy stuff and uh we'll uh We'll let everybody get about their uh, their business. Everyone, thanks again for joining. Uh, Marty, Troy, thanks for joining tonight. Yep. Uh, remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. We'll see you when we see you. Cheers, guys. Cheers.